I want to welcome everyone once again to the Ultra Life Today. It's a podcast, but also some of you will hear this on radio around the country. Uh, I'm Josh Bellew. I'm Adam Payne. We're yeah. hanging out today with somebody, Adam. Oh, one of my favorite people. He's, he's a person I love and hate all at the same time. <laughs> You have to have people in your life like that. It's a yin yang. No, it's, it's thing, actually it's right? all it's actually all love and a lot of respect. It's a man that uh, actually helped introduce me to ha- to how to speak on radio, how to how to behave in this in this space. Ooh, you're just getting I all kinds be, of accolades. I, didn't I wouldn't know we're be gonna here. Be I, w- I wouldn't be here if if any of you chagrin the fact that you're listening to me on radio and you don't like it. You have one person to blame, and that is Kyle. Uh, I knew. Drew. I knew it was going to turn around on your brother. This is not how anyway. I thought this was going to go. <laughs> when I so, agree so, to this, yeah. so, how so, dare so, you? So, it's good so, to be so, here, guys. Yeah, let me throw some things in real quick. Kyle has interviewed almost every major supplement company in the world on his radio broadcast that's run now for almost twenty years. Kyle here, twenty-two in years. Super Health here in Oklahoma City on uh, another, another network, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Kyle has formulated products for a number of these companies. Kyle has interviewed people that have written some of the most interesting books that have had emerging types of thoughts in the natural health space. Kyle's seen the sexy. He's seen the unsexy. Uh, There's uh, things we're going to talk about today in his deep, dark past that I'm really excited about. But I want everyone to know. Oh, and, and the other thing that is where everyone knows you from, Kyle, is Doug Kaufman's Know the Cause. Yes. You were that co-host guy yes. forever, right? Wow. Oh, my man, Doug. Uh, Doug Kaufman is my mentor in more ways than one. Um, and being his right-hand guy all those years on Know the Cause, uh, being able to participate in the writing of some of his books, and every day getting to just walk alongside him, he is a he's a forever friend. He is a forever mentor. We are we talk uh, every other day or so. Still, and, uh, still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, nothing has changed. Uh, there was a time when Doug thought that he was going to bring it in for a landing, and I uh. thought it would be a, a good idea for me to be back in Oklahoma City. I was down in Rockwall, Texas, where the show is filmed, um, and 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 it just he will not retire. And that's so a good thing. It's, for still, us. it's still going on. I, it's still going I, I, on. I bet people won't let him retire. He's uh, probably got this really core group of people well, that just. And I know people love that. And not only that, guys, he his whole message is that fungus causes disease. Fungus is the cause. That's why it's know the cause. And when he first started doing this, he came back from Vietnam. Um, as a Navy corpsman, he was sick, and all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Doug back together again. And he began searching and searching, and he started to find this thing called fungus. Um, as he says, doctors know this much about bacteria and a little yeah, less about virus bit. and almost nothing about fungus, wow. particularly Just back like then. nutrition. <laughs> and so, yeah. Did I say that? And so as he began researching it, he would go to the USC Medical Library back before there was an internet. There were library cards. And he would spend hours and hours and hours researching, and he kind of developed a philosophy of fungus equaling disease. Well, back then... Nobody but nobody bought it. But he has trudged ahead, moved forward, and today, Adam, I just sent Lots you and of Josh. Lots I know. It's been coming I know. into us. The things, yeah. the, the studies that are coming out that are showing antifungal drugs effective in cancer, this is something Doug predicted 20 years ago. Yeah, it and takes there's so many years. So, so, yeah, so, there's, so there's a complicated relationship between fungus and the human body. And it, Kyle, I, I want, can we, can we talk about this for a little bit? Cause yeah, it, cause sure. You, I mean, I don't know anybody that, I mean, Doug probably knows more than he than, does. Right. So where, where in the body does, does fungus get attached to? Is it the cells? Is it the fat layer? Is it the extracellular matrix? Where in the body well, does, do, does fungus kind of reside? Well, keep, Keep guessing because it's all of those things. That's it's what I all was of them, and say. it's and it's everything. Yeah, exactly. I was going to guess, but I was going to say I think so. We've had the most interesting guests on Know the Cause over the years, and one of the best guests was outstanding off camera 
and could not speak on camera. What? And his name was Doug Haney, I believe. And he could came... you just pretend you were never filming him and get him to like? The... I they tried. tried. <laughs> you tried. <laughs> tried, Josh. I tried, <laughs> Adam. We did that. Really? And there were times when I said, "Look, you guys just talk," and then I'd whisper to the guys, "Turn on the cameras." And he just had a spider sense. He about knew when he was being recorded. That's right. <laughs> but this guy wow. independently Sorry. came to mm. the same conclusions Doug did about fungus. But he uh, had some interesting things. He was working with a pathologist. And the pathologist and a, a, a doc that does autopsies after right. someone dies for the so post-mortem. They, so you can see a lot more in the autopsy than you can see in I the will, human body. In, in my brain, I will never be able to rid myself of this horrific image that he brought us. Okay, I want to, I want to understand. Somebody died of cirrhosis of the liver, uh, a longtime alcoholic. And when they did the autopsy, they took a picture of this man's liver mushrooms were growing out of this man's liver, what? and it's the kind that you would see in your garden. John. Wait a minute. In a living human being, there were literally mushrooms growing in his liver. And it is so repugnant just to remember. But this is a guy who would come in and bring us autopsy reports, reports from pathologists, Things that Doug had been surmising over the years about how this fungus, these mycotoxins, work within the body. And here comes this other Doug who shows us, wait a minute, this is exactly what they're seeing under a pathology slide. Wow. This is how wow. we're seeing it wow. even in gross anatomy post-mortem. And so, yeah, it's one of those things that Doug is now saying to himself, wait a minute, my time has finally come after 40 years of nobody believing me, and now every uh, journal I look at has something that validates what I've always said. I can't retire right. now. Right. A couple of years right. ago, it was the heart health thing. Oh, that's the, the, right. The tie-in with the fungus and heart health. It's the truth. And uh, and cancer research, arthritis. So, uh, and, and the thing that I brought you, and again, we're not doctors, this, and I'm this, not, this, but this it was the COVID. Health. Remember the COVID thing that I sent you? I don't remember about the COVID the, thing. Okay. I, I well, remember the cancer because there was an amazing study where they looked at cancers and they said that the, that like for a given cancer, there were like four funguses that were just associated with these different cancers and it was grouped. So it's like uh, glioblastoma, there were f three or four different funguses that could be associated right. with glioblastoma. Ovarian cancer, there were different funguses that could be associated. And it's going to be hard for me to remember. It's just been long enough. But we had a doctor who used to work for Doug, and he was seeing people clinically. And he began sort of mentoring me in how he would treat what kind of antifungal protocol he would put on people according to the condition that they had. Interesting. And it goes back to a study that Doug and I saw, and what they were doing is they were uh, giving men uh, with prostate cancer mm. various drugs, and all of them, as it turned out, also had toenail fungus. So they said, yeah, we gave them this antifungal uh, for toenail fungus. Every one of them overcame their prostate problem um, including the ones who only were taking the antifungal drug. Oh, so the control group. The control group was still given an antifungal drug for and their toenail fungus, better. and they completely resolved. And so we, uh, Doug and I called the authors of the study, and we said, what? This is astonishing that yeah. these antifungal drugs, and they said, uh, well, we weren't studying whether antifungals worked for this, so we didn't find it to be relevant. Oh, and this my is the gosh. way This is the way that clinical research sometimes goes. If they weren't looking for this specific thing, if another thing was found, they sort of disregard it, and they, and they say, well, we have to study it separately. The point is, yes, Josh, uh, I am not shy about my relationship with Doug Kaufman. He has been a mentor for me in the health world, obviously the fungus space specifically, but also in the life world, just living life. I have gotten so much out of my relationship with him. And a lot of people up in, uh, who are listening to this know Doug Kaufman intimately, yeah. and I'm happy to say I'm one of you. Yeah, a very approachable guy. We need it's we just need a lot of fun. We need to get him on the show here. We I should mean, do I, it. I, we should I, do I, it. If only you knew someone who could arrange that. I don't know. 
Could you? Yeah. I'll, uh, can uh, you figure so that out? Can, do you have an extra bottle of Ultra Cur that maybe you can I throw can, my I way? Can, I have two. Oh, well, it, 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 he'll be there later today then. Good job. <laughs> so, so I want to set something up and let you talk a bit more in the next segment. We've got about three minutes till we, till we get there. But, you know, Kyle, you and I have been paying real close attention to a transition that has taken place that we know has been going on forever, but since COVID, it's become an emergent thing. You mm. and I were texting back and forth yesterday talking about seeing people brought into the House of Congress and being interviewed regarding origins of COVID, different things like that. And, you know, we were talking off air today when we were doing your broadcast that, you know, it's interesting, but there seems to be this real unusual shift. I'm reading polls that are taking place where people are having vaccine regret. Mm. People are saying COVID was oh. handled inappropriately. Masks shouldn't have been done. Schools, got, I mean, I'm just, it's emerging. It's mm. like there's this serious, interesting climate. Serious uh, vaccine regret. I mean, y y people, yes. people, I mean, I don't know how the media is covering this up, mm -hmm. but it, it has to be a cover up of some sort because I fear, I fear people just dropping dead, uh, literally dropping dead. Right. I've got I've got actually got two of those that are one degree of separation from me that have happened right. within the last month. And You're uh, kid, no, really. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm, 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 I've witnessed it firsthand. I've also witnessed what I believe to be the triggering of certain autoimmune disorders, including cancers. We've got a lot of doctors that we're dealing with right now, Adam, and we have a lot of patients of theirs that interact with us through some adjunctive products that we make, right? Yeah. And I'm hearing from so many of these individuals that their doctors are saying the cancer has come back with a vengeance and we don't know why it's not even responding to drugs and we don't know why it was in remission for years and then all of a sudden the trigger and the outlier being the vaccine. And I didn't want to take this down the vaccine road so much as I wanted to. Kyle's got an interesting past and he shared some things with me before off air, Adam, maybe with you as well in regard to what he used to do. Because tell us a little bit of your origin, Kyle, in terms of college, what you studied, where you ended up going after that and some of the things you began to learn being out there amongst people in the big pharma industry as a salesperson. And and we've got like a minute and a half for you to kick it off, and then we'll go on the other side of this and let you just take off. I'll give you the headlines. I was a chemotherapy drug rep after studying chemistry and public relations in college. I was originally going to go to medical school. I began working for an oncologist. That really kind of showed me, no, nope, conventional medicine and, is and, not where and I want to go. And what about that? specifically i mean obviously oncology people are passing away but what was it for you there there were conversations i had with this physician who was very kind to me and he was actually on the board of admissions at ou medical school so he was a good person to know and as we began talking about not just the day-to-day -day, but the overriding philosophy of conventional western medicine i began to have my doubts wow. mm. and so when we come how back many years ago was this kyle uh, this was in uh, about 1995 until about 98. Okay. So you're listening to Kyle Drew. I am Josh Bellew. I'm Adam Payne. This is Ultra Life Today, and we're going to be right back after this break. Um, fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be fun. Our mission is to take nature's most beloved botanicals and enhance them with our liquid protein scaffold technology. This helps it reach your cells faster and better. With exponentially enhanced bioavailability, you'll feel better every day. Ultra Botanica, the feel-good curcumin. Welcome back to Ultra Life Today. We're moving into this second segment with our dear friend Kyle Drew, known as the meat-eating, tofu-hating nutritionist, uh, <laughs> the guy that was uh, literally the right-hand guy for Doug Kaufman, co-host of the Know the Cause show for 17? About 15 years. 15 years. So okay. I'm, on, I'm, 15 years. I'm on a mission, by the way, with, with Kyle. I'm, I'm next, oh. When he comes over to my house, I have the meanest, most tastiest, fried tofu sandwich <laughs> because i say ah. tofu hating I, I'm, a, I'm on a mission of sorts well see for kyle and i we wouldn't we probably <laughs> we would probably say 
you can cook tofu to where it tastes really good and it's still just not very good for you. That's, that's right. That's where, that's kind that's of where he and I reside. That's right. That's where he and Wait I reside. Right. Why, why do you think we tofu do not, is good? We do not what? want any effeminizing hormone spikes in our lives. We I've just got don't. too much of that. That would explain a lot. Right. Yeah. Right. No, I, right. I am in touch with my female side, but All right, I don't so, want to be that much in touch. So I, I, I hijacked the, the discussion so, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, rewind the clock here. So you've met with this guy that literally is one of the... The admissions uh, guys for OU for Medical OU School. Medical. Anyway, I worked with him uh, for a number of years while I was finishing up college. I wasn't sure which direction I was going to go. And after I worked for him for a while, I realized, I rem I'll never forget, I was going up to Tulsa at OSU's uh, School of Osteopathy, Osteopathic Medicine. And I would drove up there with my fiance to take a tour of the place. And we did that. We were driving back to Oklahoma City, and I said, honey, here's my vision. I want to go to medical school, and then I don't want to practice medicine. I want to be a nutrition guy and a supplement guy and basically be the anti-doctor. And she's sitting there chewing on a straw and sucking down a Slurpee, and she kind of goes, I don't get it. <laughs> and she said, why would, you, why would you go for four years of, of uh, medical school, a year of internship, three years of residency, only go into all that debt only to not do this thing that you've spent all these years studying? And I said, well, you know, I just think that it's a good idea to do it because I'll get my white lab coat and blah, blah, blah. But anyway, the point is is after an awful <laughs> lot of discussion. And back then, there was no such thing called functional medicine. Right. Wow. So I made a mistake. Dr. Whitaker wasn't in practice yet. Dr. Whitaker was Early. was in practice, Early. but it, yeah. was a, it was almost like he was an exception, he such a, an exception he, he was to a the quack. rule. No, and and so, well, actually, no, he was actually one that people did actually list. For some reason, he had a mystique. People listen. And anyway. so the point, though, is, is that mistake or not, I decided not to go to medical school, but with a chemistry degree and a, and a public relations degree, the pharmaceutical industry came a-calling. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, I was interviewing for jobs, and I have to set this up. Uh, my poor wife, those of you who are listening who cannot get your man to commit, you got nothing on my poor wife. We dated for eight years. But we, be, we met at a time when she had been out in the world and came back and was starting to go to school. I was in school. We kept taking breaks from school. Anyway... So we weren't ready financially to get married. Um, but finally, 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 in 1998, Christmas Eve, I asked her to marry me. Yes. And then I start interviewing for jobs and I get a job with a pharmaceutical company selling chemotherapy. They weren't paying me much money, but it was more money than I'd ever had. Gotcha. I was super excited. Now I can marry my wife in the next six months, uh, my fiance the next six months. I'm excited. I go off for two weeks of training in Berkeley, California. After all this dating and all this finally proposing, finally I'm going to have some money that I can uh, have a family after one day of training at this pharmaceutical company, I called her and I said, I made a big mistake. Oh, wow. I think I might have to come home. Wow. Now, fast forward and know that I still worked for them and was in the industry for two or three years. But I call those my Judas years. It's because in exchange for the silver, I sold my soul. Yeah. I knew differently. And here's why. Very first day of training, chemotherapy training, a man walks into the room, waits until everybody shuts up, and then says the following. The definition of chemotherapy is a poison which we give to patients hoping that the cancer will die before the patient does. That was a very harrowing How thing sobering. to say. I thought, poison. Yeah, but it's so true. And so then we started going into some of the depths of the specific chemo that we were going to sell. Guess how, guess what the percentage of people who took that drug uh, would improve? The percentage of improvement. Six percent of people who took this drug would have any results at all. That means 94 percent of people 
who are paying thousands of dollars a month for this, 94% will never get a benefit. Wow. But So it, we said that it had a 6% response rate. That's what we said in training. However, when we went out into the marketplace to market this to the doctors, the paperwork that we gave the doctors did not say it only works 6% of the time. It said that this works 67% of the time. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. wait. So So what they were doing is playing statistical games and subsets of this patient. Statistical hand-waving. And that is what pharmaceutical reps were taking out to these oncologists. And we were saying, if you give this drug 67% response rate... And that was unheard of at the time. This was for chronic lymphocytic leukemia and oh. non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And nobody, no doctor, no patient knew that if they gave this drug, uh, as per the label, there was a 94% chance it would have no impact whatsoever. So, so you've mentioned something that I call a shell game, basically. But what's really concerning to me, but it makes sense now, I've always said to people, please don't hold things against physicians because they are trained in a very, very narrow paradigm to look at things a certain way through different methodologies. In your world, you just shared something with me that is so frightening because you've just said the doctors themselves were actually being led to believe there would be a success when there wasn't. How devastating. That's the point. Then I went, uh, and I, Josh, what's more devastating, I wish I could tell you names, but what's more devastating is I did well with one pharmaceutical company. Another one recruited me to work for them, also oncology. They had the most well known breast cancer drug of all time at oh, that time. I know which one. It Can't is. tell you which one. I, I just do don't want to get yep, into yep. it, but they hired me. <clears throat> I'm in training for that. Well, the guy who was doing the training knew that I had a chemistry background. Most pharmaceutical reps did not have a science background. So he had a few glasses of wine over dinner. And after he had had a few, his lips loosened a little bit. And he said this to me, Josh. He said, Kyle, I can't wait to show you the statistical gymnastics we had to do to make this beep look like it works. Wow. That's, that's immoral. And, I'm sorry. And, and what they were saying is that their scientists that worked for them, the pharmaceutical company, were now working for the FDA. And they helped to get this thing through. Guys, can, I... Can anyone say regulatory capture? I, sure you can. I'm not. I promise you what these stories are were first-hand experiences. How many years ago was this, Kyle? It was 1999 till uh, 2002. That breaks my heart. And so when this was going on, it led me onto a path of really examining the pharmaceutical industry as a whole. When I began my radio show, Super Health, I began interviewing a lot of folks formerly in the pharmaceutical industry, formerly with FDA, including uh, Dr. Marsha Angel, who was the editor-in-chief of the New England Journal of Medicine. Oh, wow. She wrote a book <laughs> called the, Dru- the Truth About Drug Companies. Her credibility... Oh, she was one of the good guys that got blackballed, right? That's exactly right. She but got blackballed. She was showing in her book... And P.S., I'm in the natural health industry. She is no f- friend of the natural health industry. Oh, wow. know that. But, that, but, that's, that's but good, she cannot stand normal practice in the journal industry and in the pharmaceutical industry. What she says, essentially, is that between the out-and-out fabrications in the studies or them, the pharmaceutical companies, only showing positive studies to these journals right. or the FDA and leaving out all the negative ones, you are getting not a full picture of the efficacy of these drugs, how effective they are, or the safety concerns sure. of these drugs. And so when I tell you 
that this changed my life, that doesn't begin to tell you how much my mind has shifted into saying this. If it comes from the pharmaceutical industry, I begin with skepticism. It doesn't mean that everything's bad. It doesn't mean that everybody's a liar. But I begin with skepticism that comes from my own experience as well as people at the very tippy top of the food chain, such as Dr. Marsha Angel, right. former editor-in-chief of the New England Journal of Medicine. And she's far from alone. It just keeps getting more and more and more exposed. Wow, you're listening to Kyle Drew, uh, our friend who is just kind of talking a little bit about his journey in moving to a place where ultimately he began to work with individuals and share with them uh, how they could get well. And and you know, and you didn't. It, it's you didn't, astonishing. Actually. Yeah, and, and you didn't even actually stay there. I, this is oh, a great. This is a great. Leave. This is a great setup for this next segment oh. because one of the things I wanted to talk about today is 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 Kyle, you've, you've said it this way to me before, in the past, and I love it. You say, man, there's certain things as it relates to the natural health industry that come along every now and then, and they are just sexy. Mm -hmm. They're just like, whoa, those are sexy. Yep. And then you said, and then there's certain things that are just, what did I call it? The old, the boring, and the uh, unsexy. But necessary. But necessary. Supplement. That's right. Yeah. But necessary. Yeah. So I'm hoping yep. in this next segment, <laughs> you can you can kind of move us in through your journey of being a, a clinical nutritionist. Why yep. you realized that was a very unfruitful field for you to be a part of in the pharmaceutical <laughs> industry. Yeah. Yeah. And and oh, then, and no, in the, no, and, 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 the and nutrition. in the clinical yes. nutrition industry. Gotcha. Gotcha. So anyway, we're going to go to a break right now. I'm Josh Bell. You. I'm Adam Payne. And the break is actually going to be for a whole week. So. That's you come right. back and uh, stay tuned for the Parts continuation yeah. of our interview with Kyle Drew. Uh, join us again next week. We look forward to hearing back from Ultra you. Ultra Life Today.